This system basically incorporates two most important systems. One is fuel, one is electronics. We're going to deal with both of them. The easiest way to look at the system is to decide which end of it you want to start on. And I prefer to start on this end. <laughs> Everybody gets to this end first. You pull up the gas tank, flip it open, you're ready to put some fuel in. Stop. Look at the unit you're pulling the fuel out of. Has it got oxygenated fuel in it? Does it have alcohol in it? Go to another gas station, get yourself real fuel. Nissan does not recommend putting oxygenated fuels in. I know for those of you who live in major metropolitan areas where you don't have any choice in the matter, this isn't going to come as good news to you. But try to understand, if you can, if you can find a place that sells fresh fuel, the place that sells the most fuel will get you the best fuel. Don't go to your cut rate stations. There is no economy in buying cheap fuel. Buy the best fuel you can. Now remember one thing. These cars were rated for 92 octane fuel in, 1980, in 1975. If you're going to buy fuel, don't buy it on the basis of whether it says regular premium or unleaded or whatever. At this point, you have one choice only, unleaded. There's a mid-grade and then there's a premium. The premium itself is 92 octane at this point, 91 to 92 octane. If you're going to take and put it in for the extra 25 cents a gallon it takes, it will come back to you. If you open up your jockey box, if you all still happen to have your original owner's manuals, it will tell you to use 91 octane fuel. Don't buy fuel by name. It's called it regular in those days, 91 octane regular. So everybody runs to the gas station, buys regular, 88 octane, can't figure out why it doesn't perform, knocks pains and wants to load up. Get 92 octane fuel and don't get anything that has oxygenated fuel in it. Oxygenated fuel is alcohol. That's the part that kills you. Alcohol loves to attract water. Water loves alcohol as much as water. Alcohol loves water itself. Condensing in the tank tries to pass through the system, and from there on out, we're going to talk a lot about what water does to these systems, and you do not want water. There's only one way to make sure you don't get it, and that's to not put gas in your tank, because you're going to get some degree of water in every tank that you get. So you're going to have to put a water line dryer in, which Nissan doesn't recommend. You're also going to have to take and change your fuel filters more often than they recommend in the book. Fuel filters are cheap compared to injectors. Fuel filters are cheap compared to any other component in this car. You could buy a lifetime supply of those for the price of one set of injectors. Don't ever forget that. Once you put fuel in, if you feel comfortable that you bought 92 octane fuel, at least we've got that part of it taken care of. Hopefully your tank isn't rusted or have other problems that got to it. Hopefully you've all owned your car since it's brand new like all of us, right? Uh, yeah. And enjoy the fact that the car itself will work when it is set up as a factory agreed. You, if you're going to do this, don't try to re reinvent the wheel when it comes to fuel injection. It's a super simple system. It's just something which people overcomplicate. We're going to try and decomplicate it for you in this video. And in the ones to come later on, maybe we can take and debunk some of the other myths that are based on all the gremlins that live in these things. The water that started out in here is going to cause as many problems as we can talk about in all the videos that we can make. We're going to try and skim over those and try and get you to understand what caused your problems and why the next time your technician tells you your fuel pump failed and it's only a year old, you'll understand what it is. We're going to do some pictures of that up close, but we'll move ahead from there. Fuel pump's mounted in the rear. Just ahead of the fuel pump is a fuel damper. Now the damper system doesn't really matter why it does what it does, but it is necessary. It has an adjustable nut on the, and a bolt on the top of it. Don't adjust it. It's not something that you can do anything with. It's preset at the factory. Your supply line, there is no filter between the fuel pump and the tank itself. It's an open line into the tank. So whatever you put in here goes right into the intake side of your pump. And the pump itself is bathed in fuel. It is actually, the electronic portion of it is flowed by the fuel and cools it also. If you're going to take and put anything of a contaminant in here, the first thing to suffer is going to be the pump. The second thing to suffer is going to be the fuel filter. And if it gets past that, then it's just too late. You're going to have some serious mechanical damages not only electronics, but mechanical damage as well. As far as the lines go, getting up to the front and back, you really don't need to worry about those particularly, unless somebody did like they did the other day and they jacked up the car and set the jack stand on them and crushed them. And we looked forever, but we finally found that they had smashed the lines. Kind of a remote idea, but don't eliminate that. Once you get up to the front, the fuel comes up into the engine compartment, and from there on out, we'll deal with that once you can see a, a better picture of where we're at.